Hello everyone. Today we are going to see how to draw free body diagram and how to apply Lamis theorem for the given configuration. Let me read the problem. Two steel truss members AC and BC. So here you can see two truss members AC and BC each having cross sectional area of 100 mm square are subjected to a horizontal force F as shown in figure. So these two truss members are subjected to a horizontal force F. All the joints are hinged. That means the point A, B have hinged joints. If F is 1 kN, here the external force is given that means which is equal to 1 kilo newton okay determine the magnitude of vertical reaction force developed at b in kilo newton so we are asked to calculate the reaction force at this joint b so b is a pin joint member so before Calculating the reaction force at point B, we must know what is the force which is acting along this truss member BC. Then only we can calculate the reaction force at the joint B. In order to determine the tension along this BC, we are going to draw the free body diagram of the given configuration. Now let us draw the free body diagram for the point C. Okay, so it is considered as particle and it is acted upon by three forces. How to draw the free body diagram? First, we have to isolate the body from its surrounding. If you are interested in constructing the free body diagram for the point C, so we have isolated the point alone from the entire system. The first force F is an external force which is applied on the truss member and so I just represented this force in the free body diagram like this. So force F, the magnitude of F is given that is 1 kN and the next force is tension along this truss member BC. So this is the tension along the member BC. So I am going to represent this force in the free body diagram. So here you can see it is the tension T1 which is acting along the truss member BC. The third force is the tension along the truss member AC and which we call that as T2. So in free body diagram, we have to represent this force also and here you can see, so T2 is represented in the free body diagram. Now you can see that the particle C is acted upon by three different forces, F, T1 and T2. The direction of these forces are to be known to apply the Lamis theorem. So here the direction of this force T2 is given with respect to horizontal axis and that is 45 degree. Similarly, the direction of T1 is given with respect to horizontal and it is 60 degree. The remaining angle can be easily calculated. First, let us calculate what is the angle between F and T1. So the total angle in a straight line is 180 degree. So the angle between T1 and F is 180 degree minus 60 degree and it is going to be 120 degree. Similarly, the angle between T2 and F can be calculated by subtracting this 45 degree from the 180 degree. So this angle is 180 minus 45 which is equal to 135 degree. So now we have known the angle between the subsequent forces. Now let us apply the Lamis theorem. 
before getting into apply lamis theorem let us review what is lamis theorem is all about lamis theorem can only be applied when a particle is in equilibrium here in this example the particle c is in equilibrium and the another condition for applying lamis theorem is the particle c must be acted upon by three concurrent forces here you can see the c is acted upon by three concurrent forces so the two conditions are satisfied one is c is in equilibrium and another condition is c is subjected to three concurrent forces now let us apply the lamis theorem it states that each force is directly proportional to sign of angle between the other two forces first let us consider force t1 t1 over the sign of angle between other two forces that is f and t2 and it is sin 135 degree which is equal to the force f over sin of angle between other two forces t2 and t1 so the angle between t1 and t2 is 105 degree so f over sin 105 degree which is equal to t2 divided by sin of angle between the other two forces that is t1 and f which is 120 degree so t2 over sin 120 degree now let us consider this two relation alone because we have to calculate the tension t1 in order to calculate the reaction force at b we don't need to calculate the t2 so let us consider this relation alone so from that relation we can calculate the t1 value was f over sin 105 multiplied by sin 135 degree so the f value is known which is equal to 1 kN so t1 is 0 0.7320 kN so now let us consider the point b because we are asked to calculate what is the reaction force at point B. B is a hinged joint. A hinged joint offer two restrictions. One is along horizontal direction. As you can see here it is a horizontal direction. Another one is in the vertical direction. So that means this hinge joint will not allow the element to displace along horizontal as well as vertical direction. Whenever a motion is restricted, then there will be a reaction force. So at this point B, we have two reaction forces. One is along horizontal direction and it's this we call that as R H B. That is reaction force in the horizontal direction at point B. And there will be a one vertical reaction that is R V at B. And the resultant of these two reaction forces, which are acting in the horizontal and vertical direction at point B, passes through this line that is BC. So, here this is the reaction force at B. The magnitude of this reaction force is equal to the tension along this stress member BC because both are equal and opposite in nature according to Newton's third law okay the action and reactions are equal in magnitude but the directions are opposite now let us draw the free body diagram of the joint B so how to draw the free body diagram first we have to isolate this element from its surrounding so we have we are going to isolate the point B from its surrounding and this is the joint B and the only one force which passes through the point B is the reaction force and it is RB. The magnitude of force is T1 as we discussed here because both are equal and opposite in nature. The horizontal reaction force that is a component of this reaction force RHP which passes through in the horizontal direction and the vertical force 
RVB which is passing through in the vertical direction at point B. Now we are going to calculate the angle between this RB and RHB to find out the magnitude of horizontal and vertical reaction forces. So in order to find out this angle, I am going to draw a line, a horizontal line which intersects the line BC. Okay. And here you can see there are two parallel lines and we have gotten transversal BC which intersects these two parallel lines. So when a transversal intersects two parallel lines then the corresponding angles are same. So here this is the one corresponding angle, this is another corresponding angle so 60 degree here also it is 60 degree. Now another concept is if two lines are intersecting each other then the opposite vertical angles are equal. So that means the 60 degree here and then an opposite vertical angle is here and it is also 60 degree. Now we have determined the angle between RB and RHB and it is 60 degree. If you want to know more about angle relationship between the parallel lines and transversal, you can refer my video lecture provided in the description. So the horizontal force is T1 cos 60 degree and the vertical force is T1 sin 60 degree. Now let us calculate the vertical force because we are asked to calculate the vertical reaction force. So RVB is equal to T1 sin 60 degree. So the value is 0 0.63 kilo newton. So today we have discussed how to draw the free body diagram and how to apply Lamis theorem for a particle which is subjected to three concurrent forces and it is in equilibrium condition. Thank you for watching.